Hello there, my name is Aaron. I'll be your host for about the next 10 minutes. Welcome to a home. Make yourself at home. Uh, unlike my previous YouTube videos in regards to vaping, vaping technology, product review, talks and whatnots, I think product reviews are important. I think the products that we're using are important. I think the vape tanks that we use are important and whatnots, but uh, Mm, something equally as important just as much as the technology and the vaping tanks and the vaping devices that we so choose to use. I think an equally important point here is not only discussing products, but more importantly, you can look upon this video as being more, say, maybe a PSA or as they call it, a you know, very minor public service announcement. And products are important. Vape tanks are important, the vaping technology is important, and the know-how behind them is important. But what's equally as important is vaping safety and vaping health. But more importantly, I'm going to cap in on the uh, vaping health side of things. And just share a little personal information here with you in regards to me and my vaping, my walking the path of, uh, of vaping and learning and my journey. Uh, close to about four, four and a half months go back, when I was really eager to bust into the vaping build world, uh, at the time I only had an iTaste VV 2.0, I was making a transition into the Bamo V5 part of things, and I was using a ProTank 3 Mini, at the same time I only had one uh, ProTank 2 clone, both taking kanger heads, kanger coils, and whatnots. And at the time, I was strictly solely buying from brick and mortars down the street, spending $11.99 for a five pack. Uh, at the time, I was busting into some social media groups, especially on G, and seeing people talk about re wicking, rebuilding coils. I didn't have all the money in the world at that time. And kind of still don't, but uh, I wanted to bust in, and I tried a couple techniques. Originally, I was just cleaning coils with a soft bristle toothbrush and thinking, okay, th that'll do it. No, it, it didn't do that. And then, stupid me, uh, yeah, I called myself stupid, and <laughs> I have every right to do so for what I did. Um, I chose to bust into the build world re-wicking cleaned Kanger coils that came in my ProTank 2 coils uh, made by Kanger. I was simply removing the silica, using a soft bristle toothbrush, cleaning it off, getting the tops of them looking shiny again if I could. And what I did due to frustrations of wanting to bust into the vape world, into the build scene, uh, thinking I was doing the right thing. I kept hearing cotton, 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 but not paying any mind to the word organic in front of cotton. And I was thinking all cottons are the same. You know, if it says 100% pure cotton, hypoallergenic, you know, whatever, it's going to do just as good. So, stupid me wanting to bum rush the process and rush right into it without seeking more knowledge, get a little bit more education. I busted into the world using Q-tips. I made a couple kanger coils, re-wicked them with the hypo soft allergenic safe 100% pure natural cotton. This is what I was going by right here. This this is what I was going by and I was thinking all cotton's the same, organic, pure, this is hypoallergenic, it's been medically designed to, you know, be pure for you, it's not going to hurt you, that, you know, all, all the powers that be that go into giving products the 100% pure, safe cotton stamp of approval, they've taken this into consideration, I'm in good hands, I got nothing to worry about. So I re-whipped my canker coils with the stuff that comes off the top of these Q-tips, again the 100% pure natural cotton, soft hypoallergenic safe with the cotton stamp of approval, thinking, oh, that's going to cover me. Uh, Re-wicked them, 
saturated them, let them wake up for about 10 to 15 minutes. The pure hypoallergenic absorbs juice just like the organic. You couldn't tell one for the other due to absorption levels. So it was absorbing it and I was seeing the little micro bubbles and I was thinking, cool, I'm kind of busting into the build world here. I just re-wicked some, uh, you know, stock kanger heads. Um, wasn't the right thing to do. After sitting and wicking up for 10, 15 minutes, I took my first hit. At first it was good. <clears throat> it, it, it was just as good as the Japanese organic that I learned to build with. Just as good, just as flavorful, just as wonderful for all oh, roughly say about the first 15 minutes of vaping. After about 15 minutes I started to get a weird sandpapery feel in the back of my throat. Associated then with a sandpaper feel in the top front of my throat. My tongue started to feel prickly and tingly. The roof of my mouth started to burn. My sinus cavities in my nose began to stuff up, burn, prickly, tingly, sandpapery, and then started to congest. I was having tightness of chest, tightness of lung. My chest muscles were feeling very tight. My throat started feeling literally, and this is just for dramatic problem, I'm not going to choke myself out in front of you, but it's like you can hear my voice normally. When I was talking to a medical professional over the phone about two hours into this event, due to the fact that I used hypoallergenic cotton, the 100% Q-tip cotton, to re-wick my vape technology, this is the way I, I sounded like this. Literally sounded like this. It's as if a very strong person put their hand across my throat, and never mind the gas playing in the background, but uh, it's as if somebody grabbed my throat, was squeezing it. It's kind of like the Undertaker from the WWE about ready to prep me for a choke slam. Uh, felt very pressury, and the medical professional I was talking to said, if my voice continued to be that way, and if the throat choke sensations were continuing, and the dryness, and the sandpapery, and the burning, and the nasal congestion, uh, this uh, professional told me that I would have to seek immediate medical attention. And that didn't bode very well for me. I didn't like that. And it all boiled down to I was advised by a non-vaping person, a medical professional, uh, like a, a nurse's medical 1-800 hotline for after hours medical advice and care. Knowing nothing about vaping, I told her what I did. And she proceeded to tell me over the phone that that is not the type of cotton or that you should be using. Uh, that type of cotton that you just ingested the invisible vapors from the burning of that product is causing you medical complications right now. That is not a safe cotton to be subjecting to heat and subjecting to inhalation. So, again, she didn't make any recommendations of what I should use. Again, she, she wasn't a vapor. Nurses Medical Hotline, not there to tell me what to vape on. But uh, let me know that these were bunk, bogus, should not be used, not designed for it, not designed for inhalation. Inhale some of this 10, 15, 20 minutes down the road. You might if you're equally as sensitive as I was, might have the same type of circumstances happen to you that happened to me. Uh, shortly thereafter, I talked to a person that's a friend of mine on social media. Uh, he's also a member of one of my vaping communities online for G+. Actually help runs the place for me too uh, as a moderator. And he advised with a particular certain handful of few others that if I am going to re-wick, start b busting into the build world, I would want to do it with things like the 
Walgreens cotton. And the key word here is this one has a key word of hypoallergenic. This one has the key word organic. Not subject to processing in a hypoallergenic way. Not subject to dyes, chemicals, pesticides, herbicides, whatever else that might go in the earth that makes the cotton, you know, anti-acid manure sides. I mean, well, whatever you want to call it, it's pure, organic, safe, soft, luxurious, made with 100% pure cotton. Granted, the same thing that's on here, but the only thing that differentiates them is the organic word. So this is the Walgreens brand, their in-house brand of organic cotton balls which you don't need to boil like certain other cotton balls out there, even certain organic ones out there. You don't need to boil these. You buy them, bring them home. It's a little bit more sloppy to build with than, say, an RBA to RDA uh, certified organic cotton squares. The squares are the preferred. They're the best. But these will do in a punch, in a pinch. <laughs> Punch. No, they don't leave me a punch. These punched me, and these gave me a respite breather. But uh, this is the type that you want. <clears throat> you want organic cotton. You do not want hypoallergenic. Again, medical review. You know the the medical line. No, I I got punished for my eagerness to bust into the build world in vaping the wrong way the uneducated way. This video is nothing more than an education. This video is also designed for the new entry level person. This, it, this video is not going to cater for the novice. This video is not going to cater to the intermediate. This video way definitely is not going to cater to the seasoned veteran. You all know this stuff. It's all old hat. But what this video is aimed towards is the entry level. The brand new person sitting there at their dining room table with a little bunch of kangaroo coils with a little bit of Q-tip hypoallergenic cotton and wondering if this is going to work. The very first time this person who this video is meant for is thinking, should I build this, should I do that? It, this is, I'm talking to the noob here. Noob, noob, nice to meet you. I want you to vape safe. More importantly, I want you to vape healthy. I don't want you suffering a one night of hell that I experienced at the hands of this type of a product. Q-tip, hypoallergenic, please don't use it. Walgreens Organic, use it every day of the week. Five ways come Sunday, you'll be just fine. Preferred though, almost industry standard for your inner novice, intermediate, and seasoned veteran builder in the vape world. You want, and which is the most safest on the planet to do so with if you're going to vape, and if you're going to rebuild, or if you're going to clean coils and re-wick, if that's all you have the money for, and if that's all you have the skill for, if you're simply going to clean a coil and get that nasty silica that's just been burnt in there out, and you choose to put cotton in there, you want Japanese organic cotton, certified with either business cards of authenticity, certificates of authenticity, exterior package wrapping with authenticity. You want that particular sort. You want ones Japan, made in Japan, Japanese organic cotton squares, can be used for RBAs, such as my three Atlantis V2 RBA heads that have been rebuilt, one to 0 0.3, one to 0 0.5, and one to 0 0.8. That's what you want to build, and I I think Kanger has a good line of sub ohm tanks that have RBA technology. Rebuild them with this too. If Kanger's what you're using, this is what you want to be using. If Atlantis is all you're using, this is what you want to be using. So, 
Japanese certified organic cotton with either business cards of authenticity or certificates of authenticity or exterior packaging of authenticity. That's what you want. This will not knock you in the dirt like the hypoallergenics knocked me in the dirt. This is absolutely on par with the Walgreens organic, but this builds better. This is more convenient. Japanese is the way to go. This is American organic cotton. This is Japanese. Somehow they just do it and they do it up right over there. I don't know how they make it differently than our organic, but pure. I mean, with the Japanese, I'm rewicking things like the Vertex V2 RDA that I have built up. Rewick with the square Japanese cotton. If you're into K Fun styles, Orchid V2 right here. This build is billed uh, to 1.05 ohms, rewicked with the square Japanese organic cotton. And if K Funds or RDAs are not your pleasure, and if you're solely a Genesis man, here is an actual authentic Kraken made by Vicious Ants that only sees the Japanese square RDA, RBA cotton that I showed you. And if all three of those are not what you're building with and you're just busting in, Protein Tooth Clone, B Pro City, Bay Area, accepts Kanger Heads. These were the tanks that I was using at the time of my medical debacle. The, the, the night of hell and uh, there was a kanger head in there I cleaned it rewicked it with the hypoallergenic and vaping on these same tanks put me into my medical quandary so if this is what you're doing if this is the level that you're at like I, I was do yourself a favor don't go to your medicine cabinet grab this to rewick go to Walgreens first and for about five bucks you get a cotton, cotton uh, count of 80 balls and then when you can afford it again this is only to the entry level this is only to the noob when you can afford it go to the Japanese organic much more convenient slightly better slightly more healthy but other than that so I'm sorry this video ran so long sometimes my videos do but I felt unlike having something to prove a point, like if I was doing a review about this, going, oh, i got one more thing to say, one more thing to say, and I'm thinking it's important, and you're sitting there going, why don't you just shut up, buddy? Well, I think this is the most important video I possibly could produce for you, and that is simply vaping safety, vaping health. Kind of a minor PSA going on, public service announcement. I think this video might be the most important video that I launch out into the YouTube galaxy other than my cat trying to launch into you. Um, but I hope this has helped. Again, aimed to the entry level, the brand new who has just spent his five kanger heads or she has spent her five kanger heads. The silica's burnt, they're getting bad hits. They're looking at their wallet, they see zero dollars in there, there's lint, and they're looking at this Protein 2, a Protein 3, a Protein whatever, and they need these heads done with something about them, but they don't know what to do. And they're thinking, well, maybe I could go to YouTube and watch a, you know, what to do with spent coils. Huh, there's hundreds and hundreds of videos out there to know what to do with spent coils. But some of those videos I've seen don't recommend the organic cotton. Some videos I've seen I personally feel are halfway piss pot poorly produced. Not very good PSAs if you know what I mean. But uh, this is just designed for the person, male or female, sitting at the dining room table frustrated, no dollars in the wallet, spent hanger heads on the table, you got a pro tank too, and you got some juice, and you want to vape, and you're nicking. If all you can do is clean your coil with a soft bristle toothbrush, do so. Be sure to don't bend it. Do it soft and gentle until it becomes shiny on the top. Do not go to your medicine cabinet and use hypoallergenic Q-tips. Bust off 
little shards of that, whittle it up, feed it through, pop the top chimney back on, and you're vaping. No. Huh. You will be vaping. But you might not be vaping for long because your throat might become so closed off that the vapor produced off your tank might not reach your lungs. And uh, I don't want to see anything bad happen to you. I don't. It was hell night for me about five months back. I don't want it to be hell night for you. So that's why I do it. And uh, I hope you got something from this. I'll start up with my usual product reviews after this one's been produced. But I think our vaping safety and vaping health is more important than me pointing out anything any product on the planet can do. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you for allowing me the time in your life to come into your life long enough to uh, express my concerns about vaping safety and vaping health. And uh, with that, I'll bid you adieu. Wherever you're watching this day or night, hope you're having a good day or night or whatever what time it is for you. And uh, keep the faith. Keep on vaping. But let's do it safe. Take them on easy. Bye-bye.